Father, we thank you for the anointing this morning, the grace to minister to these, your sheep. Bless them, strengthen them, touch them wherever they are this morning. It's a great joy, it's a great honor to come and minister your word, Father. I know that your word has gone to work this morning in every heart and every mind. And no one will be the same again. We all agree and say, Amen and Amen. Please. I know Texas is in the house. They've made it abundantly clear. Wherever you are streaming from, please put your name in. Let us know from where. If it's a different province, if it's Johannesburg, if it's family, whatever. Give us a, some response. Give us, you know, your pastor likes to preach and get an amen or something. So put it out on there because we're looking at your comments. And if you need any prayer, of course, we're here for you. So um, it is a, a really tremendous season to be in. If you know the Lord. <laughs> If you know God and you know His Word, it's an awesome time to be in. If you don't, you must get saved. You must understand the importance of this moment. The arm of God's salvation is here for you this morning so you can get saved. His arm is reaching out to reach out and to save you from a world that is broken. This morning I am continuing in my series called Made for Dominion. And I want to touch on something called this morning a supernatural life. The supernatural life the supernatural life our founding scripture our foundational scripture is psalms 8 and verse 3 when i consider your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have ordained what is man that you are mind full of him his mind is full of you this morning and the son of man that you visit him oh yeah he had to come and visit us to fix things in the earth. Come on somebody, thank the Lord this morning that we got a visitor that came into the earth and his name is Jesus. <laughs> and then he looks, David looks at it and he says, look man, you God, he's speaking to the Lord, he said, you made him a little lower than God. Elohim. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You will not live in shame. You'll be crowned, not with shame, but with glory and honor. I'm speaking this to generation. You've made him. He's telling you what you were made for. What were you made for? Somebody say made for dominion. Come on, say made for dominion. Come on, say made for dominion. That's what he said. You made him to have dominion. Over the works, over what? Over the works of your hands. Wow. What did God make? I'm getting ahead of myself. You put all things under his feet. So whatever God made, he then got, made you to have dominion over it. And he put it all under your feet, whether it be. And so, let's get into Genesis chapter 1. So, when you understand that environments are everything. If you're going to rule in life, we shared this last week. Environments are everything. So look at God, he's making this man, but before he makes the man on the sixth day, he's making something called the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God. In the, it's a supernatural thing God is doing, but you cannot expect the supernatural if there's no God. Because in the beginning, God was central. That's what Adam lived with. He created the heavens and the earth. So it wasn't that God was sitting in heaven. It says that God, who lives outside of heaven, His glory is above the heavens. He makes heaven and earth. It's not like it was in heaven and then put on earth. No. He made heaven and earth. So we know about the project that went wrong and Adam and all that Adam struggled with, but God created a supernatural environment for Adam to live in. You're going to follow me this morning and get really good. So the heavens and the earth are connected. There's no separation between heaven and earth. I want to say this up front because the Lord's been speaking to me about this generation. This generation is going to begin to experience what Adam had at the beginning. You're not going to find a divide between heaven and earth anymore with this generation. There'll be pockets in this generation that will be able to step in and get an understanding in the heavens and make it happen in the earth. 
That's how it was. Adam would step into the heavens and whatever it was in heaven, the supernatural environment God created for this man to live in. Everything about this environment, and this is important to understand this morning, if you want to develop a supernatural lifestyle and walk in the supernatural, you must of course understand heaven and earth because that's what God made. But here's the number one thing about the supernatural environment. If you study scripture, you'll find out that God brought animals to Adam. And Adam, whatever he named it, that's what it was. Supernatural environments bring things to you. Because he blesses him. And he says, now be fruitful. If you study the book of Proverbs, when it says, the blessing of the Lord. There's a version that says, brings wealth. It's a supernatural environment. Adam never worked a day. Never went to a university. Never had to beg God. His whole environment was one where God brought stuff to him. Everything else created, it was, you don't understand that, that, that when David looks at this man, he says, what is this man that your mind is full of him? He's looking at Adam and he's thinking, but my God, this was God's prized possession. Don't you understand? It was God's man in the earth and God was, he's made in my image. And he puts him in the earth. And what the father was doing is bringing to Adam what he needed. Because supernatural environments bring things to you. Someone's going to hear me this morning. Because the power of God in this place, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So, the blueprint from heaven is all that Adam could walk into and receive blueprints. And there was no division between what God created in the heavens and the earth. That's what gave this man the ability to have dominion over the earth. This generation is not going to operate in the natural anymore. The supernatural is going to become the natural for this generation. Because there's not going to be no separation anymore between, listen, listen, listen. When I die, I'm going to go to heaven. You then died already and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You are sealed already. You can walk into the throne room of heaven. I mean, when you completely over here, you just let go of your breath and it's over here and you just switch and you're in heaven. But supernatural victories are coming to this generation. I'm getting ahead of myself. Because when you understand the importance of environments, environments in the kingdom of God become everything. Go back to last week's sermon. It becomes everything. If you're going to experience the supernatural, God will not tolerate anything that is going to be a problem in the heavens because it affects the supernatural. Lucifer had to be kicked out because there's something about the heavens that if you want to maintain the environment of the supernatural, things can't come into that environment and you not address it. Somebody say environments are everything. Come on, when Vashti became a problem in the kingdom, she had to be put out because environments are everything. When Jesus even came into the earth, uh, King Herod said, he is a problem in my environment, in my kingdom. And he killed all the boys because he heard there's another king is in his environment. Kingdoms, whether they are godly or ungodly, understand environments are everything. So what you have to understand is, what is it about Jesus that he could walk with heaven on earth? A supernatural lifestyle that wherever he go, he, he went. Wherever he went, there couldn't be a funeral. I mean, the undertakers had to pay back the money. He just canceled funerals. And the florist said to give back the people's money because the person is alive. Supernatural environments. Come on, somebody. Say supernatural. Say supernatural. Say the supernatural has become natural for me. I'm going to teach you that everything, when you begin to understand the importance of your environment, environments are everything. Put up the chart for me, please. It's called the dominion chart. Have a look at this. 
So in Dominion Church, we, we gave you four things last week. The first thing is to understand responsibility. When you take in charge, when you take responsibility for your environment, we've got some tremendous testimonies of people taking responsibility. One week, you're going to hear <laughs> the testimonies coming through. God is so amazing. This, the next thing is, you know, if, if you're blaming someone else, you lose the power and the authority. Come on, somebody, fold your, your legs, you know the story, and say, I'm in charge. Because any place you are failing in, is, I can only go to one of three places. Either you don't know who you are and that you can actually have authority over it. Or number two is you don't have understanding. What? Mysteries, revelation of whatever topic is. That's why one man said that there is no mountain. Man's ignorance is his mountain. So when I get an understanding of who I am and why I'm in the Word of God every morning is because we're breaking through the ignorance. What you, what you don't know won't, won't kill you. <laughs> what you don't know will absolutely destroy you. Satan likes that statement. The third is wisdom. What is wisdom? It's applied knowledge. So if you're not applying anything, you're still failing. You're never going to have dominion if you never apply what I tell you. This is your dominion chart. This is the place where you apply discipline at the end. Because I know this, I do this every day. And you persist down this road. So coming to church and having a service, I thought the first one was like, oh, that's all God wanted. Then the Lord spoke, he said, no, persist every Sunday morning. The first Sunday was rough here. Ask everybody. The second week, there was a bit of a better breakthrough. And this morning, the fire of God is in this place. Because you're going to persist. Ask anyone that is in the gym. They don't go once a year on the 1st of January. Okay, I'm sorted for the year. Kidding. When you look at Erin, she's always... And it moves from a place of discipline to the end where it's dominion and freedom and delight. You must take this dominion chart, put it up in your home. Because anything that you want victory in, that's your process. You take, you broke, take responsibility for your life. Oh, the government, ah, no, 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 get off the victim seat. Can't, in the kingdom, you don't blame anybody. Let me get, let me move on. Anytime when you come into the kingdom of God and you begin to walk, John chapter 3 verse 1 says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you were teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Jesus is walking in dominion. And wherever he goes, Everybody's noticing that he's doing signs and wonders because the kingdom doesn't only come in word. The kingdom comes with power. There's got to be a demonstration. You will not receive so much word and the demonstration not break out around you. Someone's going to come with systems and structures and strategies by this kingdom of God because what are we doing? We just go into heaven and we fetch the blueprints. We just connect them. We just worship and God downloads strategies and He gives us insight and He gives us mysteries. There'll be mysteries for this generation. I am prophesying that over you. You will not live broke. You will not live in fear. You will not live in shame. I'm ahead of myself this morning. So Jesus says to you, assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born again. So your first birth is for earth. Your second birth is for heaven. So you connect heaven and earth. Simple. Don't let the enemy try and complicate born again. Your spirit connects with God. God's not colored. He's not black. He doesn't got a black lives matter issue with him. And he's not white. He's spirit. Deal with Black Lives Matter, we're coming. Not from God. Those people are eating from a tree that God said don't eat from. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of comparisons. 
It's what's creating the racism here. If everybody eats from the tree of life, everybody will live. God made. Okay. Here's the thing about heaven, guys. So, we speak about Jesus. What does heaven say, though? You thought about it. We say that Jesus walked the earth. But listen what heaven says in 1 John 5 and 7. Now remember, if you want to have heaven on earth, you must understand what's in heaven. So you can bring it into the earth. 1 John 5 verse 7. For there, come on, read with me, are three that bear witness where? In heaven. Who's the three? We have the Father. We have the Holy Spirit, I see. And what? Uh-oh. The Father, which we call and know as the Son, is actually the Word. Somebody's got to say amen. And the Holy Spirit. That's the witnesses in heaven. That's what is upholding heaven. And if you go to the book of Galatians, listen to what it says in verse, in verse 9. For this reason we also, since the, the day we heard of it, do not seek to pray for you and ask for you to be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's our prayer for you every single day. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you increase in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to His glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, so He brings you out of darkness, out of a kingdom that is failing and he brings you and he conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins he is the image he is the image of the invisible God he's saying you don't see God but we have an image that we look into he is the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created that I inherit Heaven and that on an earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things exist. He is the head of the body, the church, which is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in the in all things he may have the preeminence. Oh glory be to God. So when God says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering. So God the Father is there. He's the first witness. I see the Holy Spirit, the second witness. What is the third witness? It was when He spoke the word. Then He, God said, it is the word that's upholding everything everything across the globe morning noon and night what's causing the stars in its place it's the word made flesh oh in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God John 1 14 and the word became flesh Clap your hands this morning because somebody's beginning to understand the power of the word. And here's the point. Anytime your environment is devoid of the word, you don't have anything supernatural happening in your life. <laughs> this generation's gonna get it. Because your environment is everything. Is everything. We had a break in as far as my gate and even into my house. But that morning, Pastor Zeke just read out Psalm 91. 
What was she doing? Establishing the environment with the Word. And here we are studying the Word and in my bedroom, in a vulnerable position. And I don't know what's happening in my house. Until I decided to get up, I had no idea. Because we're sitting in our bedroom. They're walking right around my house. I don't know it. No security company. No alarms then. Don't think you're coming back because you're going to get slaughtered this time. Angels will take you out this time. We gave you a chance to repent. We are sitting in a place. What's preserving us? The Word. For he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. The Word will keep you. You don't have enough insurance, honey. You don't have enough security to protect you. The Word of God creates a supernatural environment. That even though it looks like you're surrounded, but you are surrounded by the King of Kings. I need somebody to clap their hands this morning and begin to understand the importance of your environment. Let me, let me, let me go and give you a, another study case concerning environments. Go with me to Exodus, Exodus chapter 2 and verse 11, please. There is a man. Moses is raised up as a deliverer. And he knows by his mother and all the teaching that there's something supernatural about him. Watch now. Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. It came to pass. So Moses is, is walking around. He knows his boss. He's been raised up to deal with as a deliverer. It came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out to his brethren and looked at their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. So he looked this way and that way. And when he saw no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he, he went out the second day, behold, two Hebrew men were fighting. And he said to the one who did the, who did the wrong, why are you striking your companion? Then he said, who? The one said, then who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you kill the Egyptian? So Moses feared and said, somebody say fear. Surely this thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of this matter, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by the well. Have a look at Moses' life. He now runs from the place God called him to deliver people from. Pick up Exodus chapter 4 verse 1. Moses is in a wilderness for 40 years. Nothing supernatural happening in his life. Watch now. Moses, verse 1, then Moses answered and said, so God begins to deal with Moses. Moses, you are the deliverer. He says, nah, you got the wrong guy. Moses is condemned. He says, no, they're going to kill me. I can't even speak. He wrote himself off. God's calling him in to live the supernatural life. But Moses is in the wilderness. God's calling him to go into a place and to deal with whatever the people are oppressed with. But Moses is in the wilderness. What is going on with Moses? The Moses then Moses said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. And the Lord, and suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? Somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord this morning. What is that in your hand? He said a rod. It's amazing how God sees things that we don't see. It's amazing how God sees things and we see things differently. Look how God saw it. I mean, look. All Moses left there was with his rod. That was his reputation written on that rod. That's how they worked. You could tell the man if he's got his PhD because it's written on the rod. So Moses is leaning upon the rod. He's a natural man. 
Yet God's calling him to connect heaven and earth and walk in a supernatural way. He said, cast it to the ground. So he cast it into the ground. It became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Oh my God. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it out by, take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. My God, my God. The environment, now listen, that Moses created around him, he did not know that he allowed in his environment something called, that came from the serpent. The serpent in his environment was his fear, was his condemnation, was his guilt, was his shame. Anytime you allow that into your environment, you shut down the supernatural. God had to show him that he was leaning upon something and holding on to something that came from Satan himself. He started showing him because think of some of the things that he would have had. What could Moses be feeling? Fearful? I want to ask you this morning. You, you, you see, the environment that we're creating now in the world is that we are, we are holding on to something that's a serpent to this generation. It's a problem for this generation. Let me, let's think about some of the things that he's holding on to. Moses was fearful. We know that. He was, he was holding on to criticism. He was holding on to accusations. He was holding on to guilt of the past. He was holding on to unbelief. He says, there's no way you can use me anymore. Moses himself was shutting down the supernatural environment. Moses, what else did he have? He had doubt. He had double-mindedness. Can God still use me? He had condemnation. And he was walking around with shame. Man, I'm coming back. We're coming after this thing called shame. Because listen, how is it that this generation is struggling with COVID? There's a, there's a pandemic in the air. Who started this thing? How can you be shameful to ask for help and for prayer? What are you holding on to? And here's what people are asking. Don't, don't tell anybody. I'm not going to tell the world. Yet you need the supernatural in your environment. It's not going to work. Are you hearing me today? Because you're going to have to let go of the snake that you've been holding on to. You have to let go of the guilt and the condemnation. Hear me, hear me. God not once spoke to Moses as a murderer. What's God saying? You might have done what they said you've done, but you're not who they say you are. Can somebody be free this morning? Can somebody praise the Lord this morning and say, I'm free? Come on, come on, drive that snake out. When that serpent entered into the garden and they had a conversation with that serpent, instead of killing it, man, some of you have been tolerating so much of rubbish, you need to go and fetch a spade somewhere and walk around your house and kill a snake and say, this condemnation, I'm done with this thing in Jesus' name. This fear, I'm done with this thing in Jesus' name. This criticism, I'm done. They say I'm not lovable. The devil is a liar. You don't take that criticism from anybody. When you watch Jesus, he wouldn't tolerate one person's criticism because he maintained an environment of the supernatural. That's why when you come to Christ, for somebody to walk in dominion, they must be aware of their environment. I'm believing God and I tell you now this generation is getting ready to take that snake by the tail. Whatever has been biting you, whatever you've been holding on to, whatever you've been taking, what other people say about you, you're going to take this thing by the tail. It's going to turn into an anointing and the power of the kingdom is going to manifest. It's going to manifest to this generation. I'm prophesying that over you. 
There's a generation that's going to know who they are. And they can say, no, 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 that accusation is from the devil. No, that criticism is unjust and it's unfair. No, you are an accuser of the brethren. And I'm not going to tolerate you. I'm going to keep my environment clear. Somebody shout. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know that God never mentioned once that he killed a man. Not once. He never brought an accusation before Moses. Why? Why? Because there's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. Many of you are tormented in your homes. You don't even know the love of God. You're asking for supernatural breakthroughs. You need to be rooted in the love that God has got for you. But he who fears has not been made perfect. In love. Come on, just lift your hands and say, My Father loves me. Come on, settle this issue concerning fear. Oh, come on, somebody. You may have done what they said you did, but you're not who they say you are. You are free. Keep your environment free. Lift your hands where you are in your home right now and believe God. It's not that you need to look for the supernatural. You just have to drive out that snake that's been messing with your destiny. You just have to kill that thing and say there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout, I know who I am. Somebody begin to cry out to God and say, Lord, I know who I am. Healing is the bread of the children of God. Healing is my portion. Let your word come and fill my heart. Let the word of God richly indwell me. I refuse to receive the shame that comes with COVID. I don't care. I'm putting it out. I need God's supernatural in my environment. I need the grace of God to come and touch me. Oh, that which I've received from the Lord that I give to you. I didn't pay for it. I didn't have to buy it. I didn't have to work for it because in kingdom supernatural environments, God gives you first. Mark chapter 4 verse 11, I feel a grace in this place. I feel the love of God in this place. God's coming to touch our heart and our mind. You've been so tormented in this last season. God, did I pray enough? God, did I give enough? God, did I serve enough? I feel so bad. But the devil is a liar, child of God. I've come with a message from heaven. I've come to tell you that the kingdom needs you to know that God has got everything that you need. God has got everything that you need to live a life of victory. Healing is your portion. Let the the shame be put on the devil for him bringing this COVID in your midst. Let the devil know God is not the author of your sickness and disease. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God help this generation. Help this generation. Proverbs 29 verse 25. Proverbs 29, 25. 25. I need you to see it. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. The kingdom will keep you safe. The problem that you're having in your environment, Job said it. He said, the very thing that I feared has come upon me. You can't tolerate the fear because fear, you've not been given a spirit to fear. But a power and of love and of a sound mind, you've got to deal with that fear. Fear is a spirit. It could be a little fear. It could be a little snake. But if you leave that thing, that thing grows by itself. Somebody's going to have to use something. Chop that thing's head off this morning. Mark 4, 11. I'm a young man and I'm making lots of money. I'm working for a company. I got my own company as well. Running my own call center, writing software, earning lots of money. And the Lord calls me to ministry. I'm like, 
I'll help you. I give you money. I'll fund your projects. I'm a kingdom financier. And God shuts the stuff stuff down. Seek his face. 18 months of getting sick. I'm pressing into God. I want to know. Every time I get into his presence, no deep revelation. No understanding, no which way to go, what to do. One scripture. I got so bored with it eventually. I'm like, bro, give me the scripture again. I don't want to hear it again. What's the scripture? Mark 4, 11. To you, it has been given. I didn't do anything. I just wanted to go and follow God. He gives me a word. He says to you, it's given. Because in the kingdom of God, you don't earn it. You put the kingdom first and things are added in your life because that's how kingdom things work. To you, it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. To everybody else, all things come in parables. I'm like, God, I don't want to hear this anymore. He says, son, to you it's been given. Because I can't give you anything I've never received. Because when God raises you up, the first thing He does is He gives you. He gave to Adam. And when Adam received, He named it. God brought animals. Because that's how kingdom things work. But you must maintain the environment. What has struggled since I got born again and heard this word from the Lord? Why is this been such a long time? Unbelief. Because unbelief shuts down the environment to receive what else is in this kingdom. The word of God. The Lord said, drop your business. Move away from Holland. Jesus, everywhere he went. When you watch Moses fight, okay, I, I, so much going on. Holy Ghost, help me. Let me end up with Moses and we're going to move on to Jesus. Listen to Moses. When he finally gives in to God, God says, when you go, I am who I am is with you. That means the word. Jesus says, I am. All he gave Moses was a word. And the word shifted his environment, brought miracles and brought in the supernatural. Because in the supernatural environment, you better have word. You better have the word with you. Hear me, child of God. You jumping in and off streams and going different places and can't build on a word that God has given. You're in trouble. If you're thinking this thing's going to get easier moving forward, and one day the church is going to open in November, I'm telling you, the enemy is looking to postpone this thing for as long as he can until people die in the process, but not you. Because you're going to be sustained, how? By a supernatural environment. It's called the Word of God. Can somebody praise the Lord this morning? Because there's Word in this house. So you need a Word because the Word sustains the environment. Peter, he toils all night. Comes in the morning, washes his nets. Jesus says, give me your boat. It's in Luke chapter 5. He says, Jesus goes back over this sea, preaches to the crowd. When he's done, he says, now, cast your net on the other side. But we've toiled all night. we caught nothing. He says, but at your because once the word's in the environment, when he preached the word and he says, cast your net, listen to the dominion over the fish of the sea. Every fish in that river was looking to get into that net. Is somebody hearing me this morning that God's going to create a something for this generation? I see business deals that are coming from everywhere. I see a net breaking, boat sinking, breakthrough on this generation. Come on. I am preaching this kingdom word. When the kingdom is first, these things uh, must be added. They shall be added. Oh, 
God. I, everywhere he went, he spoke a word. And he created an environment for the supernatural. That's why you pray the word, you sing the word, you speak the word, wherever you go. Because it's a supernatural environment. Jesus goes, watch now. He, he tells him about this kingdom. And he puts things in order. He speaks about the sower. The, this is what the kingdom's at. This is Mark chapter 4. That's the beginning. He says, it's a parable of all parables. Then he says something interesting. Verse 35 of Mark chapter 4. 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, listen to the supernatural. He preached the word. He gives them kingdom understanding. He says, based upon this word, this is going to sustain us all the days of our lives. Now let's cross over. Let's get to the other side. Verse 36. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. Some of you need to understand that other little people with small faith is watching your life. You've got to come through to the other side. Come on, somebody. We're going to come through the other side of this pandemic because other people's faith is depending upon you. There are other little babies that are looking at you, mommy and daddy. They're looking how you're handling this, this season. They're looking how you're handling the Word of God. Can the parents please lift their hands and their voices and begin to bless the Lord in your home? They're watching you, mommy and daddy. The children are watching you. And a great windstorm arose. It's called COVID. And the waves beat into the boat. So it was already filling. Next verse. Move with me, guys. All right. Verse 38. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, listen to the words. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing. Listen to this generation. Things are happening. And listen to, now remember, environments are everything. You want to see the supernatural? Jesus, what were they dropping on him? An accusation that he doesn't care. He would not tolerate that in his environment because he needed to bring out a miracle. Because environments are everything. Anytime you bring condemnation on your pastor, anytime you accuse him of being a man who lacks integrity, anytime you take somebody else's gossip, anytime you get involved in other people's conversations, what are you doing? You're shutting down the supernatural on your life. Me, I won't accept that accusation. I am the righteousness of God. I am who God says I am. I will not go and you tell me I don't care about people. The devil is a liar. You don't speak to me like that. I know who I am. I'm going to maintain my love and my peace because we're going to walk in the supernatural. Now clap your hands and bless the Lord. He doesn't even say, what do you mean I don't care? What do you mean? Psh, law. Whatever you do on, whatever. It's like, huh, I'm the one who gave you the word. Wait, what's up with you people? I mean, like, what is this? Don't you know how long I've been with you? I then called you. What's wrong with you people? That's what's happening in the church right now. Instead of rebuking the wind, uh, instead of saying peace be still, uh, they're fighting with one another and shutting the supernatural down. If the church could wake up in this hour and knows what produces the supernatural, there's going to come in a great calm and God's going to prove His kingdom. Then He arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. I say, speak it over your home this morning. Peace be still. 
and the wind ceased. And there's, a, there's coming a great calm to this generation. I am telling you, you will not die in this COVID. You will not die in this season. I don't know what the enemy is trying to throw against your boat and your family. But you are coming to the other side. Can somebody praise the Lord this morning for His Word? Come on, my time is almost up. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. You know, when He came to His own country, the people shut down the supernatural. Because every time you look at me as an ordinary man, not a man from heaven, you keep looking for my faults and to find when is he going to stumble, when is he going to fall. You get nothing from me. Even though I am anointed and God's chosen for this hour, you get nothing from me. Why? Not my fault. Your fault. Because you're just an ordinary man. Not a man that's connected with heaven and earth. That has got heaven's blueprint. Come on somebody. It's time that you change your attitude towards God. Because it's affecting your environment. Your dishonor is affecting you and your home and your children. And you need to get out. It's not God's fault. We are not receiving. It, we are shutting down the environment. Moses could only move out of the desert when he acknowledged the word. He took what was fear, criticism, and condemnation, and he said, from this day forward, I see a generation with no condemnation. For there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Aaron, you got to get up here. There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. You need to understand. Say no fear here. Come on, somebody. There is no condemnation. Come on. The shame. The shame on the devil. Let the devil know. A shame on you. You are under my feet. Anyone that is in a fight with COVID. A fight in their minds. Fight that thing in your environment. And let the devil know. Oh, shake. And I'm the razor. A hallelujah. It's going to be louder than the unbelief. Pastor, what if some don't believe? It doesn't matter, child of God. Will their unbelief nullify the faithfulness of God? Certainly not. There's a mystery. Pastor Brian, hear me, son. God was showing me, I'm shutting down the system of the world in your life because I want to teach you how to receive from the mysteries of the kingdom. You want a strategy? I got it. You want healing in your body? I got it. You want peace of mind? I got it. You need a breakthrough? I got it. You need a holiday? I got it. All these things shall be added unto you. It's time that this generation stirs it up. I'm giving you the word as I am preaching. The Holy Spirit's working. I've got so much scripture. I'm going to give you one more. We're coming. We're coming. Give me Matthew chapter 8. Verse 5, please. Then we'll sing. Praise the hallelujah. Watch. Praise the hallelujah. I just need somebody to lift up their hands where they are. In the presence of my enemy. Come on, create an environment for the supernatural right now where you are. I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. I raise a
the devil know. I'm going to sing louder. Come on. I sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, yes. I'm going to sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Come on, make it loud. Come on, sing a little louder. Make it loud. Listen to me today. You know when Adam and Eve sinned and they had shame. The Bible says in Genesis 2, 2 15, they had no shame. They were naked and not afraid and they had no shame. When God walks, they sin. They walk into their environment. They hide from God. God comes and asks, where are you? He deals with the curse. Listen. They cover themselves with fig leaves. Adam wore a three-piece suit. God comes in. Listen how important this is. Listen to me. It's not like God doesn't take care of people. But what happened at that moment the supernatural was shut down. God could not bring something from heaven for them anymore. He had to go and kill an animal that he made already and provided for them. Because they were in a place of shame. So God will send you a normal job, a little bit from someone else. Make sure you go to a doctor. Make sure you go to somebody else for help. Because heaven shuts down uh, when there's shame in the environment. Can somebody sing a little louder? Break the shame. Break it. Sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing a little louder. Environment is everything. Jesus goes, they call him to heal a girl that's dying. On his way, another woman is pressing into him. She gets a healing. Because she knows environments, come on, say it, are everything. While he's done there, the news comes, don't bother him anymore. Because your daughters died. Jesus says, don't believe them. Because environments are everything. You want the supernatural? You better shut those people away that keep telling you you're going to die in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that thing. Because you are dealing with a spirit that wants to come in at any point. The Lord says, shut that thing down. Because where we're going to, you, if you want me to help you, and you want to cancel the undertakers, Drive out unbelief. He says, kill that snake. They come into the house. He says, she's sleeping. They start to mock because they're weeping. What does Jesus do? Put out the unbelief. Come on, somebody. Put out the unbelief from your environment. Say, put it out. Say, put it out. Say, put it out. Make it louder. I'm going to sing a little louder.
finish my sermon. You'll get the scripture later. Let me give you the story. A centurion. Not saved. He's not one of his followers. I'm going to take time to read this one because you're going to go home with this. Give me in Matthew chapter 8 verse 15. 8 verse 5, sorry. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, now look now. Kingdoms about territories. When you come into a territory, you take authority over it. Can I speak to kingdom people? That even though they call you to go to your job, you go and walk and you take authority over your environment because that is what kingdom people do. He comes into the region and he's going to take authority over this thing. And so a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. You at home, tormented, in a hospital, listen to my voice. I am telling you, here's a word from the Lord for you this morning. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. No one better than Jesus himself. We know Jesus as the man who walked on the earth. This centurion says, Lord, I'm not worthy that you come. That you should come under my roof. But only, come on, somebody say it. Someone say it louder. Say, speak a word. He says, he says, I know that the witness in heaven is Father, Word, and Spirit. So if you release the Word, I know the Spirit of God's going to go there and going to raise her up. Oh God. The servant, the centurion said, I'm not worthy. Speak the Word and my servant will be healed. Verse 9. For I'm also, oh my God, if I had time, I'm out of time. I, I'm also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Put up the chart, please. Just put up the chart. Listen to what he says. I'm a man who is responsible. I was given something to do. I am under somebody's authority. Not just that, I am responsible for people underneath me. He gives them the kingdom model for dominion. He speaks it back to Jesus. This is what he gives him. He has an understanding of power and authority. And he understands how the word works. Because you don't need your pastor in your house. You need the word to come to your house and to heal you and to deliver you. Now watch. He gives him this mystery. Go back, go back, go, go back to my scripture. I'm done, I'm done. He says, go. I say to this one, go. And he goes. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. He says, I'm responsible for these people. And I have an understanding of authority and power. Jesus says, wow. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said to those who have followed, assuredly I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Kingdom Life Embassy. No, 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 in another church. Kingdom Life, we feel a faith here. Let me speak another word of a Kingdom Life Embassy. He says, not even in Israel. Listen to Jesus' response. I say to you, that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. What? 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 People that aren't even properly saved but understand this dominion mandate that have never heard the gospel even preached to them but are operating under a mandate and understand. He says there are people that we think not, will not make it into heaven. He says they're coming to sit around Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. They'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed in this hour. If there's anybody that's a believer, 
that believes the word I've spoken, that it can come right into your bedroom, right into your home, and deliver you from every kind of fear. I'm prophesying that I'm sending a word for somebody who needs it this morning. Under the sound of my voice, you are set free, you are cut loose, you are healed in this very hour in the mighty name of Jesus. We all agree and say, Amen and Amen. Every head bowed and eye closed. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is your moment to make right with the Lord. Submit yourself to the Word of God. And watch God do miracles in your life. God doesn't have to be anywhere to be everywhere. As long as the Word is preached, and whoever believes this Word receives their salvation. You must be born again, child of God. Jesus is the answer. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, you're saved. Ask the Lord to wash you. Ask Jesus to come into your heart to give you a brand new start. And you'll do it. You mean from the bottom of your heart? You are saved. Cleansed. Washed by His blood. God has got a plan for your life. Your time is up. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. I want to just give you one scripture for receiving an offering. And remind you. A tithe and an offering. Tithe is your honor unto God. But this I say to you. He is so sparingly. God's system is not fair. His kingdom is still working. The supernatural environment is still happening. We'll also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So that each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. I don't stop there. Give me the amplifier. Why do we have the amplifier? I want to make it louder. Let each one. Now go back, go, go on to the next verse, verse 8. Here's what I want you to meditate on this week. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Come on, say with me. So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. I am telling you, grace will bring things to you. As you partake of God's kingdom, God says, I'll make all grace come to you. Thank you for your giving, Father. Bless your sons and your daughters. Thank you that you'll make all grace come to them. I bless you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. You are free from fear, shame, COVID, and all the other mess that the enemy wants to put upon you. You are free from condemnation. There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Don't let the enemy fight you anymore. Chop that snake's head off today. Take it by its tail and say, I am victorious from this day forward. Because I speak upon you, you will walk in the supernatural all the days of your life. For starting from this moment, in Jesus' mighty name. You are preserved, you are protected, and you are provided for in Jesus' mighty name. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you are victorious. Every environment you enter into, every bit of COVID, virus, sickness, disease, must die because you are there. In Jesus' Jesus' mighty name, we all agree and say, Amen and Amen.